in the 60s, we talk about expanding consciousness. I would never use that term anymore. The term is stop constricting and contracting your consciousness. Your consciousness is already fully expanded. My consciousness can see this whole room, but if I focus on just a point on the floor, then that's all I'm conscious of. So what we're doing is getting distracted by our thoughts. Hello, friends. Welcome, welcome everyone to this special webinar, Surrender, how it liberates us from suffering. It is such a great honor and joy to be here with Michael Singer for this special webinar. He's the author of The Untethered Soul, The Surrender Experiment, and a book that was published last year with Sounds True and New Harbinger. It's called Living Untethered, Beyond the Human Predicament. Much of Living Untethered, the content of the book, is an expansion and a crystallization of what Michael taught in a nine and a half hour online course with Sounds True called Living from a Place of Surrender. He begins by saying, I'm not going to define surrender for you, but by the end of this course, you'll know what it is. And I've now gone through the course a few different a few different times. And what I'd say is my understanding and appreciation. Michael says, surrender is the deepest path. It keeps increasing. My own understanding keeps deepening as I repeat the course. And I would invite you, if you're interested, and I think in this webinar we're about to experience, I have a feeling it will pique your interest to join us for a special cohort of the course. Starting in September, Michael will be joining the cohort for a special question and answer session. For those of you who are Sounds True One members, you get your 20% member discount if you're interested. For those of you who are joining us for this webinar and are hearing about Sounds True One for the first time, it's our new digital community platform. Please come learn more at join.soundstrue.com. And now, welcome Michael Singer. Michael. You look wonderful. Thank you. you. Was like Canada. I like Canada and I like taking the time to deeply re engage with living from a place of surrender. It gave me some great gifts. So let's start right there and bring bring our sounds true audience with us. You start the program and you say you start many of your teachings asking people, Hi, are you in there? What does that mean? Who are you talking to? You, are you in there? What, what, what is this? It's an amazingly simple way for people to realize that they're in there. In other words, <clears throat> no one ever said no. How can you say no? You heard me, you're aware that that question got asked. So that's a starting position that, yeah, I, I guess I'm in here, but what does it really mean? It means that basically you heard me say, are you in there? And you inside thought about something. Were you aware of those thoughts? Were you aware of the sound that my voice made coming in? And that's the essence of all spirituality is who is in there? Not are you in there? Obviously you're in there. Who's in there? And where are you in there? Are you in your mind? Are you in your heart? Are you in your body? Where are you? And that is the entire exploration of that course from, from beginning to end which is finding out, it's called self-realization, finding out the nature of the one who's in there. Because the one who is in there, the consciousness, the awareness of being, is the highest thing ever walked the face of the earth. It's the essence of all spirituality. It's what it means when it says man is created in the image of God. Doesn't, doesn't matter whether you believe in God or not, you're in there, that you know, all right? That's all you have to know. The rest goes up from there. No, I think for, for many people, when they look inside, it's hard to disentangle from our thinking. Like, there, I got a lot of thoughts going on. Is that what you mean? No, that's not what you're pointing to. 
Well, but, but I'm, I'm glad. Every single thing that's, that you're aware of going on in there is your teacher and it is spiritual. So you just said you have a lot of thoughts going on in there. My question to you is how do you know? Shh, just quietly, I'm not being insulting. How do you know that you have a lot of thoughts going on in there? At first it's frustrating. And eventually you look at me and say, because I'm in here and I see them. Thank you. That's the you I'm talking about. The one that's in there noticing the thoughts. Does your heart ever hurt? Does it ever feel love? How do you know? How do you know? Okay. I always tell people, you don't want me as a therapist. I don't do one-on-one -on -one with people. Why well, they don't want to, I promise you. If you came to me and you said, oh my God, my boyfriend or girlfriend left and I'm having so much trouble and so on. I'll listen a little bit, not too much. And then I'll ask, how do you know? And that's not, you're not supposed to ask that question. You're supposed to ask, you know, what did it feel like and what happened? No, I just ask, how do you know that you feel pain in your heart? How do you know that you're having trouble with this? And again, frustratingly, you will eventually have to say to me, listen, I'm in here. I know what it's like to be in here. I see what the heart feels like. I see what my mind is going through. Okay, I want to know who you are that sees that much more than I want to know what it is that you see. Now, I have to ask you a question, Michael, right here at this point, that has been a huge source of fuel for me on the spiritual journey. And it has to do with this who that's in there. You know, people will say, well, who were you when you were five years old, 10 years old, 20 years old, 30, that you inside that is aware of all the things that are happening in your life. And I don't think it's that hard for people to track that. I, I can track that. I can sense that inner witness that witnessed my life when I was little and saw all the things that were going on and up to this time. But the question I have is, if I go backwards, I, I can see that awareness at age five, but then as I get younger and younger, I start to lose track. And I don't know what that was before I was born. And I don't know if that will continue after I die. And so this promise of spirituality, you'll get to know the the who inside. I'm like, okay, I kind of know that who while I'm alive, but I don't know what it will be like when I'm not alive. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what you have to say to that. I, I, I'm glad you don't know. And I'm glad you admit that you don't know, because the truth is almost nobody knows. Like they believe, and I don't participate in that game. I don't want to just be another person who tells you to believe something. This is what I'll tell you, and I know I'm right. You'll find out. That's as far as you should go with, I don't know whether I'll be there after I die. I guarantee you, you will find out. And if you're not there, it won't be a problem. It's not like, I'm not here. Oh my God, I don't like this. No, you're not there. If you are there, which by the way, you will be, but I didn't say that, okay? You'll find out what it's like to be there and not have a body and what's going on and where am I? Why think about it now? Live your life now. Be here now, all right? You'll have that experience then. And the fact that you didn't know what you were like before you dropped down, dropped down, every, every master teaches really the same truth, which is when you drop, you're going to understand it like this. When you drop into the body, when the consciousness drops into the body, that is a traumatic experience, okay? All of a sudden, there's all these sensations and all this sound and all these sights and all these feelings and things. It, it's freaky, okay? The consciousness totally freaks out. And so it's lost. It's called the lost consciousness. It, it's not like now. I don't care if you think you have problems. You don't have problems compared to someone who has amnesia and just woke up from amnesia and doesn't know who they are or where they were. You understand that? That's like a panic type of a state. That's what happens when consciousness drops into the body. It's disoriented completely. It doesn't, and so what it does is start grabbing. We just call it clinging. It starts grabbing to mommy, to crib, to blankie, to toy. To you understand that? It just grabs anything that's steady that it can get its hands on, and it starts to build some solidity inside. It's not really solid. <clears throat> it's it's just thoughts. It's experiences, and but they're they're firm. They're regular. Always put the baby in the same crib. Don't do the experiment. What happens if I put a baby in a different crib every night <laughs> and a different mother picks them up? Because every psychologist will tell you that's out of the question, right? Because you're, the self, the, the conscious is going through this experience of trying to ground, of trying to settle. Okay, I know who I am. I am this person's child. I am the owner of this crib. I am the one who has this blankie. 
Okay, so you develop a self-concept and that gives you a sense of stability. And then you keep that throughout your entire life. So the fact that you don't remember what your consciousness was like before you did all that is completely understandable. Great masters say they do. It's none of my business, okay? They, they, you're gonna understand it was totally conscious in, in, in the womb and they know where they were before, okay? So it's nice that somebody says that, but I don't want you to say that. I, I, I want you to be real. And what real is, there was a tumultuous period until you started to build this self-concept. And all psychology will tell you that. You build a concept of yourself and then the consciousness rested on that and said, at least now I know who I am. I'm a person who lives here. I'm the person that has this, mother, daddy, this and that, right? <clears throat> and you've done that through your whole life. I'm the person that married so-and-so. I'm the person that got divorced. That's not who you are. Those are the experiences you've had. I'm not denying the experiences, right? But you're collecting experience you had and then saying, that's who I am. No, you're the one that had the experience. So that's my level. I don't want to add to the belief structure that you're supposed to believe something about what happens when you die or believe something where you were before you were born. To me, it's irrelevant. It should not be an important thing in your life. What should be important is finding out who's in there, who's in there, and why do they keep getting pulled down into the thoughts and down into the emotions and down into what's the tiniest little things happen in the world. You know, I talk about the driver in front of you freaking out <laughs> the way they're driving. Every little thing pulls your consciousness down into it. I'm interested in why and what can you do about that? And what are you capable of experiencing right now inside yourself? Because the truth is it's so high, it's not even discussable what you're capable of experiencing. All right, let's talk about why. Why I'm in this, you call it the human predicament that I yes. keep getting pulled into all of these disturbances. Yes. Well, I love that you use the word dis. I would like to call them distractions instead of disturbances. Okay. You know, it's like to get distracted. We get distracted all the time. You're doing something and then something else catches your attention. Correct. That's what has happened in here. <clears throat> you are being distracted by your thoughts. Okay. It, you're being distracted by your emotions. You're being distracted what's coming in by your senses. Your so, consciousness is so distracted by these things that it, it literally identifies with them. It says, that's who I am because that's, that's where I'm hanging out. I tell people, if I were to stare at a, a point, uh, let's say uh, the tile on the floor, if all I do is stare at the tile on the floor, that's my world because I, my world is what I'm conscious of, right? Okay. And so if I focus completely on something narrow like that, then I've narrowed my consciousness. I tell everybody in the 60s, we talk about expanding consciousness. I would never use that term anymore. The term is stop constricting and contracting your consciousness. Your consciousness is already fully expanded. My consciousness can see this whole room. But if I focus on just a point on the floor, then that's all I'm conscious of. So what we're doing is getting distracted by our thoughts, distracted by our emotions distracted what's coming in through our senses. That's a very small part of the universe, to say the least, <laughs> right? You know, it's like three feet by five feet high, or six feet high, that, that's it. It's just a point on the planet Earth. And you know my favorite saying, 1.3 million Earths fit inside the sun. 1.3 million. And how much space do you take up on the Earth? And your consciousness is constantly drawn down to being distracted and focusing on these thoughts, your thoughts, your emotions and what's coming in through your senses. That's minuscule compared to what's going on everywhere. Okay. And that's why you get caught down there. That's our predicament. That's the human predicament, which is what consciousness, which I assure you is capable of experiencing much more than just staring at yourself. It doesn't have to stare at yourself. What has, if I don't stare at the point on the floor, what do I see? Everything else. If you don't stare at yourself, what do you see? Everything else. And that's the great spiritual state, which you're perfectly capable, everyone's perfectly capable of experiencing that. But the question is how to not be distracted by our thoughts, how to not be distracted by our emotions. More importantly, not, I don't like to play how, how to not. Why are we so distracted by our thoughts? How many thoughts do we have? How many of your thoughts are meaningless? 
how many thoughts end up being you were stupid to think it <laughs> right it just didn't turn out to be real it didn't turn out to be a problem it didn't turn out to the person wasn't really thinking what you thought they were thinking you were just in a bad mood you understand that a, a lot of our thoughts the vast majority of our thoughts we better off we didn't have them they're just distracting our consciousness from work from relationships and so on and so forth so the question is why are you so distracted by your thoughts and until you learn to not be distracted by your thoughts you're going to be distracted by your thoughts why are you so distracted by your emotions? Until you learn not to be, you're going to be pulled down into your emotions. So that's the foundation to me. That's the foundation of spirituality. It's not all these techniques and clothes and different things, which is all wonderful, right? But it's the reality of, do you know what's going on in there? You're a conscious being that's being distracted by your thoughts. And so we can go into a discussion as to why are you so distracted by your thoughts? I'm not distracted by your thoughts, <laughs> okay? You are, but I'm not.